my channel and welcome. If you're new here, I'm so glad that you clicked on today's video. I'm going to be sharing with you my meal prep for the upcoming week. We do this meal prep thing every single Monday, so make sure that you hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. You don't want to miss a single one. I have a breakfast, a lunch, and an amazing, delicious, clean eating dessert for you. WW friendly, calorie friendly, all the things. So you don't want to miss a single beat of today's video. If you love meal preps, give this one a big thumbs up and let's jump into this week's My WW Meal Prep. this week I'm making a five minute oatmeal power bowl now this is essentially overnight oats we're gonna prepare it now put it in the refrigerator and eat it tomorrow or the next day when you go to eat it you can eat it cold or the recipe recommends warming it up whatever your preference is so I'm going to show you what's in the oatmeal portion and then I'm gonna also show you what toppings or things I'm going to add to my power bowl when I go to eat them so let's jump in you're going to need some almond milk or nut milk of your choice. Rolled oats, you guys know I love the Thrive Organic Rolled Oats. There is a link down below for the Thrive Market. Head on over and join it. You get $20 worth of free product when you join the market. And you guys, the prices can't be beat. It's about 30% less than your traditional grocery store. And they have thousands and thousands of fantastic, hard to find a lot of times items. So highly recommend the Thrive. Also, when you're buying oats, if possible, get those organic because they are heavily sprayed with glyphosate, which is the active ingredient in Roundup. So I love these organic rolled oats from Thrive. Definitely check Thrive out. You're going to need some chia seeds, some really, really, really ripe bananas. I have four here. I'm going to make four Power Bowls, some water, and some cinnamon. Now for toppings, you could really do anything that you want. I may add some fruit if I want a zero point topping. One tablespoon of the sprouted pumpkin seeds is only one point. So it's a great way to get in a healthy nuts and healthy fats. I also really like this unsweetened toasted coconut. So this I believe is two points per tablespoon. And then another thing that's great to add are hemp hearts. So these are from Nutstop. I'll link Nutstop down below for you guys. I do have 10% off. It is not an affiliate link. It's just supporting that company. They're amazing. I love them, as you know. So these are the organic held hemp seeds. So they're already kind of crushed up. A quarter of a cup is 110 calories. I usually use a tablespoon, and it's one to two smart points. And this is a really good way to get in some protein and some healthy fat as well. So again, you just choose the toppings of your choice. You could do nut butter. You could do almonds, walnuts whatever you want to do. So I'm just going to share with you the base recipe and then each day I'll kind of change up what I'm putting on for my toppings and add those points and calories accordingly. So let's make some oatmeal. So to make our oatmeal power bowl, it's very, very simple. I'm going to mix everything in a bowl here and then I will transfer it into a meal prep bowl. This is a little bit bigger so it's easier to mix everything together. So I'm first going to start with a whole very, very ripe banana. I picked these up about four days ago so they've sat in my fruit bowl and ripened. If you need to ripen your bananas faster, you can always throw them into a paper bag and that really helps ripen them quickly. And then we're just going to take a fork and we're just going to smash our banana. We want to get it pretty smashed up before we add in the oats and the rest of the ingredients. This is going to be the natural sweetness in our oats. So this is a great way to save calories and points instead of using maple syrup or any type of sugar or honey. You can just use a banana and it is some calories but it's just a very sweet natural way to sweeten a breakfast or even a bakery item. So once you've mashed your banana, you're going to go ahead and add in one third cup of your rolled oats. I have one third cup of water. We're going to put in some cinnamon and I always say do it to your liking. You guys know how I feel. I love cinnamon. So I'm going to put a decent amount. I also have two tablespoons of the chia seeds and lastly two thirds of a cup of almond milk. And then I'm going to just give this a stir 
get everything combined really, really well, and then we'll transfer this into the meal prep bowl and make the second, third, and fourth of our power bowls. So once I've stirred everything together, it is pretty liquidy, but the oats will soak up all of the almond milk and the water. We're gonna go ahead and add that here to our meal prep bowl. And you guys, this is a lot. This is a big dose of oatmeal, and the chia seeds will also become gelatinous as they sit in the liquid. So that's it. It's very, very simple. We're gonna pop a lid on this, throw it in the refrigerator. So let's make three more bowls. All right, so here is breakfast. You guys look at this, it's already starting to thicken up the, with the chia seeds and the oats. So this is one power bowl. That is a really good sized bowl. And then of course you would add your toppings to that. As I was putting these four bowls together, I thought about upping my protein game with this breakfast. You do have a little bit of protein in the oats and the chia seeds, but not a lot. So a great way to up your protein is to add protein powder to these oats. So I thought if you wanted to make these kind of chocolate oats, you could add the cacao powder from Livewell. You guys know how much I am obsessed with Livewell. So many of you have ordered this and reached out to me and said that you hate plant-based protein, but this one is the best protein period you've ever tried. And I couldn't agree more, my friends, because I love Live Well so much. 17 grams of protein with one scoop and one point. So you could always stir this in. I would recommend mixing the protein powder with a little bit of almond milk first and then stirring it into your oats. Otherwise, it's really thick. It thickens your oats a lot, and then you have to add milk anyway. So this would be a great way to pop in an extra 17 grams of protein in one point. You could also do like these coconut oats, or I'm sorry, coconut protein powder. You could do vanilla. And I also thought if you didn't want to change the flavor, you could do the unflavored. And look at this, you guys, 23 grams of protein. So that would be amazing. This is just the natural flavor. I like to use this a lot in oatmeal bowl, bowls, smoothie bowls, things that I don't wanna change the flavor. I'll, if I make a fruit smoothie using a juice, I add this in there. Love it, you guys, so much. So that would be a really fun way, really low point way, but lots of protein to pump up your power bowls. So if you're interested in the Livewell protein powder, I will link it down below for you guys. I have 10% off. Highly, highly recommend. As you know, I have all the flavors. I love them. But let's talk about points and calories on this Power Bowl. So without any toppings, because you will choose toppings of your choice, highly recommend protein. The bowl itself is six smart points on both blue and the green plan, and only three on purple, because you don't actually have to count the oats on the purple plan. 313 calories per bowl without any toppings. So yeah, breakfast, my friends, it's going to be Delicious. For lunches this week, I'm making chicken meatball casserole. Like I mentioned in my grocery haul, I've been craving meatballs, but I also kind of wanted a casserole, some pasta. So we're putting it all together for the best of both worlds. I'm gonna have some steamed Brussels sprouts for an added veggie. So let's take a look at what's in our lunch. First, you're going to need some nonstick cooking spray, minced garlic, pasta. I'm going to be using my all-time favorite Fiber Gourmet Pasta. This is their new packaging. They reformulated their pasta and made it even better. It has pretty darn good ingredients. And what I love most about this pasta is you can have two ounces for two smart points. Now, traditional pasta is two ounces for five or six smart points. So it is less than half, sometimes a third of the points of traditional pasta. And look at this, you guys, 100 calories per serving instead of 210, so half the calories. You're gonna get 25 grams of protein versus two, only 17 net carbs versus 21, and seven grams of protein per serving. Where else are you going to find that? This pasta is the best. My husband does not allow other pasta in this house. He says this is the pasta that he likes to have. He always asks when I make pasta, is it fiber gourmet? Because it is that good, you guys. It's so incredibly delicious. You can pick this up off of the Net Nutrition website. I'll link that down below for you guys. If you use a different pasta, you will need to recalculate the points of this recipe because like I said, this is the lowest points you're gonna be able to find. So I'm gonna be using the penne. 
This is the Skinniest Dish Marinara. It was just in my freezer, so it's been defrosting most of the day today. Now this recipe, I will link on my website with this with the chicken casserole recipe. You'll need some Parmesan cheese. I like the fresh grated. This is canned pumpkin. You'll need some canned pumpkin. I know that sounds weird, but make sure you add it to the recipe. Parsley and minced onion. You can also use a fresh onion, whatever your preference. I have salt and pepper. One pound of at least 96% or leaner ground chicken, and then some mozzarella cheese. And then like I mentioned, I am going to steam up these Brussels sprouts. I picked these up in my Imperfect Foods box. You guys know my obsession with Imperfect Foods. I will link that down below with $10 worth of free product when you join Imperfect Foods. You won't be sorry, it's awesome. So I'm just gonna chop the ends off of these, throw them here into my handy dandy Pampered Chef steaming basket and throw those in the microwave. And then I'm going to season them with Dax because again, you know my love for Dax. The green zest is my favorite on vegetables. I'll probably add a little salt and pepper, maybe some garlic powder, but I love Dax not only because they are clean, natural ingredients, there's no salt. So it's great if you watch your salt, great before weigh-in, no MSG, and the flavor is outstanding. It is on point, you guys. They have 20, over 20 seasonings. They just came out with a ranch that is spectacular. So check out Dax. I also posted a little hack on my Instagram page about using the Dax blackened seasoning to make your own Tyson blackened chicken tenders for way better ingredients, way less expensive, and just better overall taste. So definitely give Dax a try. I do have 10% off and free shipping. I'll put that code here on the screen and link it down below. So let's make some lunch. So the first thing we're going to do is make our meatballs because once we add everything to these, we do want to throw these in the refrigerator for about 20 minutes. So in my bowl here, I have my one pound of 96% ground chicken. To that, I'm going to add half of a cup of canned pumpkin. And again, I know it sounds weird, but it's going to just bind the meatballs and it's going to give it a really smooth taste and texture. You won't be able to taste the pumpkin, I promise. We're also going to add in some minced onion. And I would say to your liking, I'm gonna do about an eighth of a cup. And then we're going to add some parsley. You could use fresh parsley if you would rather some salt. So I'm going to actually put in two pretty good sized pinches of salt and then two pretty good sized pinches of pepper as well. And then we're going to add in some minced garlic. So I'm going to throw in a pretty good sized scoop. And then with a spoon or your hands or whatever your preference is, we're going to go ahead and mix all of this together. Put some saran wrap on top and throw this into the refrigerator for 20 minutes. While the meatballs are in the refrigerator, I'm gonna prep my Brussels sprouts. So I'm just gonna chop the ends off, throw them into the steamer basket here. We'll add some water, a little bit of salt, and we'll steam these up in the microwave. So we chopped up the Brussels sprouts. I added them in here with quite a bit of water. I am going to add just a little bit of salt, basically to salt the water. And then I'm gonna pop this in the microwave. That way they have a chance to cool completely before we put them into the meal prep containers. So the Brussels sprouts are in the microwave. I have a pot here of salted water coming to a boil to add in the pasta. We're gonna let this cook down, drain it, rinse it with some cold water and set it aside. So Brussels sprouts are cooked. They are not cooked all the way because I am going to reheat them and I don't want them to become mushy. I would say 80% cooked. To those, I'm gonna go ahead and add in some pepper. I'm also going to add in just a little bit of salt and Dax, which is of course the star of the show. So a lot of it of Dax. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that in and then I'm just going to give this a quick mix, a good stir together. And then I'm just gonna set these aside. And when we put together the meal prep containers with the casserole, we will divide these out into those five servings of our meal prep. 
Next, we're going to go ahead and take the pasta. So this is cooled, rinsed, and we're going to go ahead and add in the marinara. So this is a full jar, a 20 to 24 ounce jar of marinara. Now it's zero smart points, but I do like to watch my calories, as you know. So I did calculate this at about 24 ounces of marinara. We're just going to give that a stir, make sure the pasta and the marinara are combined. And then this is the first layer in our casserole. So we have a nine by 13 baking dish here. We're going to add some nonstick cooking spray. We don't want anything to stick during the cooking process here. And then the first layer is the marinara and the pasta. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. Spread it out as evenly as you can on the bottom of your baking dish. And then once our meatballs come out of the oven, they're just about done, we will nestle those in with the pasta, add some cheese, which of course is the best part, and get this into the oven. So I just pulled out the meatballs. These look and smell delicious. So they actually formed a pretty darn good meatball shape. So now I'm gonna use some tongs here and I'm going to gently put them in my pasta. They seem to be really, really moist, which uh, no one's gonna complain about that, but you just have to be a little bit careful when you're popping them here into the pasta. So I'm going to just nestle them down in. We'll add some cheese, and then I have my oven still going at 350. I decided not to turn it off. We'll just let it keep being nice and warm, and then we'll put the pasta in. So here is what it looks like. Doesn't this look absolutely delicious, you guys? I can't wait for lunches. This is curing all of my cravings I've been having. So in my measuring cup here, I have one cup. This is the Trader Joe's organic mozzarella. It's one of my very favorite. It's a great dupe for the light shredded mozzarella that Trader Joe's used to have that they said was coming back in 2020, but has not returned. This one, you can have a quarter of a cup for only two points, and it is really good fatty, as fatty as mozzarella can get cheese. Great for the smart points. So we're gonna add that, and then I also have a quarter cup of parm, and I'm just going to sprinkle that over the top as well. Now this is going to go back in that 350 degree oven for about 20 minutes, or until everything is heated through and the cheese is nice and melted, but Hello, meatball casserole. I'm so excited. Look at this chicken meatball casserole. You guys, the cheesiness alone, I am so excited. This entire pan makes six servings. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this into six individual servings. We'll load it into the meal prep container with some Brussels sprouts, and let's talk about calories and smart points, but oh my God goodness so this is one serving look at that you guys it's three to four meatballs pasta i seriously cannot wait for this i wish that it was tomorrow lunchtime already yes i'm excited so i'm gonna go ahead and package up the other five containers there'll be one extra serving my husband will definitely dig in and i'll be back to share the points <laughs> So here is lunch. I Like I said, I cannot wait for this. What a hearty, delicious, filling lunch, packed of protein, get a little pasta, some veggies. So how this breaks down in points is six servings total is only four smart points on both the blue and purple plan, which is not bad at all, and six smart points on the green plan. 359 calories per serving, not counting the Brussels sprouts calorie-wise, but the Brussels sprouts are zero points as well. So yeah, you guys, what a fantastic lunch for four to six smart points. For a sweet treat this week, I am making blondies. Now you could do almond butter, peanut butter, sunflower butter. I'm choosing a mixed nut butter just to add that little extra bit of all those different nuts into my blondie. And we're going to use a brand new Lily's product that I found on the Nutrition website. So let me show you what's in our blondies. First, you're going to need some flour. This is the whole wheat from the Thrive Market. Again, Thrive is linked below. I'm going to be using the Kirkland nut butter from Costco. I really like this nut butter. There are several nuts. There's some chia seeds, flax, a lot of good stuff in this nut butter. I will be using the Sucre and Gold Brown Sugar Alternative. 
I buy this off of Nettrition, so the same place we buy that pasta from lunch, and the new lilies are new to me lilies that I'm going to show you is all purchased off of Nettrition, so I'll link that down below as well. I'm gonna be using melt plant-based butter, baking powder, vanilla, salt, you're going to need eggs, and here are the new chips. Now, I have never seen these. They do say new. These are the white chocolate style baking chips. You can see I opened them. I had to try them. They're delicious. They are so, so good. So I'm gonna put white chocolate chips in my blondies. You could use regular chocolate chips. You could really use whatever you want. You can omit those and add nuts, your preference, but I cannot wait to have something with these white chocolate chips. Nutrition is the only place I've ever seen these. So while you're on there getting the pasta, you can grab the Lily's white chocolate and the sucre and gold. So let's make some blondies. So let's get started on these blondies. So the first thing that we're going to do is take the peanut butter and we're gonna add it to a bowl here. And then what I like to do is pop this in the microwave. I know that might, may sound weird, but I like to pop the peanut butter and butter into the microwave just to kind of start to melt it a little bit. I feel like it mixes a lot better. So I'm gonna throw this in the microwave for just a second. And then you can either use a hand mix mixer or just a whisk like I'm going to do. And we're going to whisk this together. So that way it's a little bit warm. You can see the butter is a little more melty. The peanut butter is a lot warmer. So we're just going to whisk this until fully combined before we go ahead and add in the rest of our ingredients. This alone, hello, peanut butter and butter. Now we're going to go ahead and add in two eggs. And we're also going to add in three quarters of a cup of the sucrine or whatever brown sugar that you're using. We're going to give this another stir. We're going to kind of stir as we go. Now for the flour, baking powder, and salt, you can add that in a separate bowl. Whisk it together first to make sure that it's all incorporated. But I... Honestly, in this, you guys let me know down below if you're supposed to do this, but I very rarely do. I usually just add it all into one bowl. So that's what I'm gonna do today, is I'm gonna go ahead and just add in the flour. So I have three quarters of a cup of that wheat flour, whatever flour you're using. I'm also going to add in just a pinch of salt and then one teaspoon of baking powder. And then I'm going to stir this again before I add in the vanilla and fold in the white chocolate chips. White chocolate chips. Give that another stir, fold those in. I did measure those out on my food scale. I basically did 10 servings. I can't remember, it's 14 grams per serving of the white chocolate chips and I did 10 servings of those. And now let's grab out that eight by eight brownie pan and get this ready to go into the oven. I'm going to spray my nonstick pan here with some nonstick cooking spray. You can also line it with parchment paper, whatever your preference is. And then I'm going to scoop this deliciousness. You guys, look at this. Doesn't that look so good? Into my pan here, spread it out as evenly as possible. And then this is going to go in a 350 degree oven until cooked completely through where you can insert a toothpick and it comes out clean and then we have a blondies i can't wait for this this smells and looks so good i think the white chocolate chips are going to be a really nice addition now you can do the regular like i mentioned you could even do butterscotch chips or really whatever sounds good to you i just have been really excited since i discovered those lilies on nutrition i wanted to try the white chocolate so I am excited. Alrighty, so brownies are ready to go into the oven at 350 degrees. Look at these blondies. They smell amazing. My house smells like a bakery. I just pulled these out of the oven. I'm gonna let them cool for a little bit and then we're gonna cut them into 16 brownies and I'll be back to share the size. We'll take a good look at them and I'll give you smart points and calories. So here are the blondies cut into 16 squares. So that is a good sized blondie oh my goodness that's a great size so here is the blondie look at that yum it is so delicious i tried a little bite that is a good sized blondie so again the pan made 16 servings they are five smart points per blondie which is not bad you guys you're having a blondie with 
lots and lots of peanut butter for some healthy fats and some nuts and you're getting some white chocolate so five points per blondie 153 calories so can't wait to dig into these this week thank you for joining me on another weekly ww meal prep i hope you are as excited as i am about these three recipes breakfast lunch a sweet treat i can't wait to dig in every single day this week i am loving meal prepping i love having all of my food ready to go pointed out calories figured out all the things are ready so it's just grab warm up go it's amazing so definitely check out my website which is linked down in the description box where you're going to find all of today's recipes with points calories substitutions everything is on my website also in the description box you're going to find discounts to all my favorite things as well as some of the products that i shared with you today and you're also going to find the link to head over and join my Facebook group. We would love to have you come over and join us. We're in the middle of a 90 day summer body challenge and we'd love to have you join us there as well if you're interested in taking part in the challenge. So check out that description box down below. Again, if you're new, stick around, hit that little subscribe button and the bell so you're notified when new videos are uploaded. If you love today's video, give it a big thumbs up. It means a lot to me and really helps out my channel. So. Thank you in advance. And of course, I'll see you all in my next video. Happy Monday. Bye.